But also I want to thank uh, Majlis, I want to thank uh, Lara and Rami and just remember all of these conversations we had in the last few, few couple of months with Lara, Carmel and Lila who is also with us. It was really great discussions we had. I also want to thank everyone with us for coming from France. Uh, so many names. Uh, thank you all for coming and I'm excited for, for this conversation. For, uh, and to be with you in, 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 in some ways uh, while not being able to, to be in person. Uh, I hope it's going to happen soon. <laughs> um, I want to share today, so I'm thinking of today for, for this presentation, I thought of uh, that I will be sharing with you like a few of my projects uh, that engages, uh, as, uh, as Carmel said, issues of uh, time, memory, collective trauma, diasporic doubling uh, that I had through my uh, artistic investigations of, uh, of both uh, historical events and uh, sometimes uh, the, the deconstruction of my role as, as author or as an artist. Let me uh, share my, my screen. I hope I hate technology, but I think it's gonna work. <laughs> Tell me, what do you see when I share? Uh, we see that very good. Okay. Good okay. So we are, <laughs> we are here. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, like in, in my, uh, uh, before I introduce a little bit myself, but like in my work in general, I, I just wanted to start from here, from these dichotomies that I use in my work as a truth versus fiction, uh, ambiguity versus didacticism, fake or the copy versus real or the original, um, and appropriation versus uh, plagiarism. Uh, I use them as uh, to research and to play between the overlooked, invisible, and uh, or what is unseen. Uh, in different projects, I found myself starting to embody sometimes uh, other identities uh, or other persons. Uh, that I construct sometimes in fiction way or I collaborate with uh, to, to deconstruct my own subject position. Okay, let me go back a little bit and uh, uh, before all of this, I want to go back in time and share with you this kind of, I would say it's a cheesy childhood memory uh, growing up uh, in Sharjah city. Uh, before we went back to, 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 to Palestine. I born in Palestine in 87, but we, and we moved to, to Emirates uh, in 88. So I born in the, in the, in the beginning of the first Intifada. Uh, and, uh, and in 88, I wanna, I wanna read this small, uh, uh, this small paragraph. And this picture is, is me in 97 on the, on the gate of, uh, of the public school. Uh, of, of my public school in, in Sharjah, Al Khan. Uh, a one year old Palestinian child of stones in 1988 moved with his family from Palestine to the United Arab Emirates. He never threw a stone, uh, but he used to stand in the morning queue at school with other students singing the Emirati anthem, replacing carefully the word, our Emirates with our Palestine, with no one noticing. And this just memory for me, it just reflects uh, this kind of, I would say this diasporic feeling to, the, to, to being in exile from Palestine, even not being a refugee or being outside for, for but still how those are still very, Im integrated with the, with, with the notion and those feeling of displacement. In Abu Dhabi at KFC with my family, <laughs> I also am sharing this image just like that time of being in the 90s and the growing up on, uh, on the creation of Dubai. Uh, Dubai is, is, is becoming bigger and bigger uh, since the moment in 2000 that we went back, which is totally different right now and I never went back there. Uh, so the moment we went back, the second intifada started in 2000. Uh, 
uh, in Palestine. So those really, in a way, uh, influenced my work in a very indirect subconscious way. I wasn't the, the kid who is, uh, who's very active in Palestine, even living it, and it's a part of my family. But last detail I want to mention, the idea of, uh, of visiting Palestine every summer from, from Emirates to go, to, to, uh, to go through driving car through Saudi Arabia, to, to arrive to Amman, leave our car, enter just the Jasser, uh, and enter Palestine. This experience for me is very uh, ironically, uh, symbolically, uh, the symbolic aspect of it is, is one question that I always remember when I get these questions from my relatives and family, extended family in Palestine, asking me, when ahla? Hon will be Emirat? Where is better? here or in Emirates? And that heavy question for, 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 uh, for me on thinking how I, wanna, uh, how I wanna satisfy them to tell them, oh, Akid, Palestine, Akid, no, no question. And those are questions while, while having other questions of uh, I don't really know that place. And, and um, so I'm starting with these questions of how do diaspora find solutions to the problems living a new place? How do substitution, copying, and namesake serve as diasporic solutions? In my current research, I rethink icons and contested geographies, as Caramel said. <laughs> I question how to use visual analogy, translation, uh, substitution, appropriation, uh, strategies to queer uh, forms of image construction. I'm, I'm having these questions here as, as a kind of a starting point for how I investigate these questions in my projects. Okay, uh, starting with this uh, first project, which is uh, um, uh, one of the early works uh, that I had uh, uh, as a full project, which deals officially with the, the traumatic year, 1948, uh, for Palestinians, the Nakba year, the catastrophe, and when we are talking officially about the creation of the State of Israel. So in this work, I became, I mean, I was in there in 1948. I didn't experience the trauma personally, but uh, this kind of re-trauma re for my generation and how we recreate and we rethink of, of that trauma uh, in my generation, how, how we re, re, re uh, help me, <laughs> we re, recreate and re, re, reuse it uh, and re-traumatize in a new phases uh, that, that moment. Uh, this work is going back to that moment and uh, I was interested in, in collecting what else happened in 1948. So starting from this project, which is, uh, I was collecting the newspapers from the day 16 May, 1948, the day after, the morning after the State of Israel, um, the morning of the Nakba, uh, taking the front page of these, uh, of, of the article that was talking about what happened yesterday in relation to Palestine. Regardless what side they took from around the world uh, of these newspapers, and I was interested in just highlighting how big in black shapes, geometric black shapes, as we see here, these abstractions, how much we took from their head in that, in that morning around the whole world. So I call it one day after, um, and it's, um, it ended up like being like this new alphabet, I would say, or a musical score, um, where headlines, sublines, or no lines, as we see sometimes uh, at all, were created about Palestine all over the world, either as the body or the margin of the world's journals, what reflects now in the world's memory. In the same, in the same, 
uh, focal point for 1948. I was also fascinated by what else happened in that year uh, besides the Nakba or what we know. Uh, in this video installation that is like multi-channels as we see in the still image here, uh, Growing up with these constant uh, images of trauma and exile, the, the collective walking of people being exiled, when we th remember the, the image of 1948 and the, uh, the diaspora of, of that moment. So I was interested in the idea of the collective walking and specifically the definition of parade. I wanted to collect other collective walkings from around the world. Uh, another subversion of images were by the found archival uh, or archival footage of the same year becomes the negative altogether, the polarized opposite of and logical substitution for the negative image we so long to reverse. So in this muted installation parade, we see numerous projected archival clips of collective walking from the year 1948 through appropriation, substitution again, and recomposing uh, these, uh, these uh, footages of like, for example, the London Olympics, which was my favorite and starting point for this, uh, for this the London of Olympics from 1948 in Britain. And I love the idea that just looking at it and uh, their slogan from that year was about sportsmanship. And it's not about the loser or the winner, it's about sportsmanship. While you are seeing like the loser is just dying on the floor <laughs> while at uh, and the Olympics and the winner is so proud. So it is, and thinking also considering the British uh, uh, relation to the topic I'm talking about that I'm abstracting myself. Um, so Olympics, Christmas parade, uh, the Pigeons of Canada, Miss Canada 1948, and more. I wanted to deconstruct what myself and my people know about 1948, redefining the concept of parade as a concept of placement and visibility into one of displacement and invisibility. Uh, another project, which is this ongoing story project, uh, starts three years ago when I moved to the United States. And when I received three packages, three DHL packages, uh, from an administrator of the Art Chicago. The packages contained inside them photographs, drawings, paintings, so many paintings, so many drawings, uh, a VHS tape, and handwritten letters and an, I, a passport copy of a person, uh, a passport copy for uh, Iranian passport. So the sender is sending it and it's all sent from Iran. So the whole package was sent to be included in Art Chicago's 2004 by the Iranian artist, I assume. But I assumed he was living in Afghanistan because he also uh, reclaimed uh, that in his uh, written letters to the administrator, hoping that they will have, uh, um, they, they will include him in Art Chicago that year. Uh, and he says in his uh, letter, this project is about Afghanistan. So after I search on the art fair from that year, he was not included, but his work kept in storage house where I lived for more than 13 years, until that my roommate, who was the administrator, retired administrator, gave them to me uh, based on uh, identity, uh, uh, identity uh, uh, assumption that I can read his Farsi words, but I can't, I read Arabic. So all of this kind of Orientalist approaches, and I was offended that she thinks that I am like him, and I was repulsed also by his work. I didn't like his work. I didn't, I was uh, uh, having his work and not knowing what to do with it, being responsible to it, and also feeling that I'm um, irresponsible to it, uh, became a kind of, through time, I became obsessed 
with his story more than his art and his art later i found i'd start to 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 like them and to be interested in his uh, in his in his paintings and i painted for the first time and literally i copied his work i recreated his work um we not knowing where he is where he lives until this work is uh, is also quarantining or just be installed in, in in new york at the sculpture center uh, and it included this kind of video uh, talking to him, especially that I knew that he lives in New York and uh, he moved from Iran to New York as an asylum, uh, staying in Turkey for one year to be able to fly to do asylum. That's what you have to do if you are coming from, from, uh, from Iran uh, and other countries. Um, and all of his story that was so, so complicated in terms that I had a refusal to contact him after finding a kind of, uh, uh, not collaboration, but working for Israel Times as a journalist who was showing images from. So this created a kind of another refusal that I don't want to contact him. And uh, as a Palestinian artist, uh, of a lack of uh, politics between us, uh, but I still have to give him back his work. So all of this is, is became a part of, of the work. And uh, the, the video was in, uh, in, in the sculpture center stated to him, hoping to find him. Uh, and uh, he, we met one week before the exhibition. And, um, um, and now I, it's, it's complicated and we are having actually uh, a meeting soon. Uh, um, we'll, we'll talk about it with the Sculpture Center in a few weeks. Uh, this work for me uh, and just the idea that the work of reproductions, amended catalogs, lectures and uh, videos created uh, or casted me in a one-sided relationship of magneticism and uh, repulsion with a total stranger uh, playing out a complex perverse. So I would say here, uh, in my work, I make a satire of this initial assumption of likeness. I start out with an existing superficial connection between sites based on a surface resemblance a tenuous crossover related to a name, uh, like in other works I'm going to talk about now, a language group, a resemblance in, in layout. Uh, one side is often a form of copy of the other. Through the dubious link to the original, the copy begins to ask questions of the status of the original. I start from there, the like, as a relation, but quickly I go in another direction. Another project here I want to talk about, which is uh, from last year, uh, and this image here uh, from this project in Michigan that highlighting the notion of, uh, of, uh, of being close to the, 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 the Arab Mecca city, Dearborn, where I was and being very interested as I grow up of like our relatives come from United States and I was always curious how their life looked like, you know, those they come from America, <laughs> our relatives. So it was really interesting to, to answer so many questions for me to understand that life uh, uh, in, in, in the United States as Arabs. But more specifically, uh, connecting that, not looking at them as, as, as an outsider or uh, I was interested in, in asking questions about their relation to, to what is called the Shriners that I will talk about right now. So instead of looking at the, at the Arabs, I became having engaging the Arabs of, do you know about the Shriners? They have a Muslim temple just one kilometer north from Dearborn. So the whole project, I will talk about this, but just to say the title of the project was called Costume Party at the Muslim Temple. Muslim Temple, M-O-S-L-E-M, Muslim. 
I hope to create evidence for the misrepresentation produced by the American Freemasons Shriners, whom appropriated Arab and Islamic words, characters, props, tropes, architecture, for their secret society's rituals. I wonder if anyone here, uh, which is, I always curious and I ask that question, if they know about, about the secret society and or their temples around the country, uh, circuses or parades. They are famous in their parades. Uh, you would find uh, them as Arab costuming themselves uh, or even worse, you would find old white men or the Shriners themselves are wearing their tarbush, the Ottoman red hats, and riding small cars shaped like Persian carpets. Uh, so that's very common in, in, in the Shriners and they, they, they are not a new thing. They are from like uh, the 19th century when it started. And the first temple was, was actually in New York, Mecca temple. The, I didn't see it, but that's the first one when the first Shriner was invited in France in Marseille city to Arab night and he loved it. So he went back to America and made his own Mecca later. Uh, another chapter you would find that. Okay, let me show this video. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so that was a part of, of an excerpt of, 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 the, of the video was in the installation, but it also include other parts where um, um, the first time I entered the temple and the Muslim temple and, uh, and dancing in the Halloween day with them, uh, like this confusion and the thinking of my identity of what I'm doing in, a in, in the Muslim temple now, instead of, I mean, I don't really pray, but instead of doing that, I was dancing in the Muslim temple and uh, to embody, to understand that place and to understand the locale of my identity and what I share with the Muslim, a Muslim. So, okay, uh, this is another, uh, they are, or before talking about this specific uh, temple, this other one in the image we see here, I wanna also mention that uh, we mentioned the Mecca temple in New York City, there is Palestine temple, which is, has a funny story that they changed its name because people after 9-11 September, they start to think that uh, they are terrorists, Palestine temple, but, and they start to really like get crazy and they change the name because they are not bad people. They are not Palestinians. They are good people, you know, like people. To, <laughs> so all of this is just was like, wow, fascinating for me. To, to like the change, Palestine lost, lost its name again with these Palestinians, that they are totally not Palestinians. Okay, the Muhammad Temple, Syria Temple, which is in Ohio. And that's when I first knew about, this, about the Shriners from my collaborator in the picture here, Amanda Asali, uh, where we collaborated uh, on, on this, on, 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 on few parts, but here specifically, we are in Chicago at the Medina Temple, uh, Medina Temple, and uh, referencing Saudi Arabia city. Uh, the Medina Temple in Chicago, their chapter is the richest Shriners, and they have this huge, amazing mosque, looks like a mosque, temple in the downtown of Chicago, uh, the Medina, which is now functions as Bloomingdale's uh, furniture. So amazing, like Orientalism, capitalism intertwined makes so much sense. <laughs> but in here, 
we are looking at what was the focal point for us when we became interested in this Quranic written thing on the Bawaba, on the gate. And it looks like it's taken from Quran or it looks like it's La ilaha illallah written, no God, but only God. But it's, uh, it's not. It's a misspelled sentence for this uh, mosque they appropriated in, not in the Middle East, but in Spain around the Alhambra Palace there, uh, to find this faux geometry tiling in, on the Bawaba. And we became interested in recasting it. And uh, that's when we, when we were sneaking in the night at some point where Amanda in the picture here is taking a mold of, uh, of, of the tiles in downtown. Um, so, so you can imagine, I want to say this, so you can imagine the level of superficial ignorant Orientalism they practiced and still practicing as we can see it now as American heritages. Um, I want to jump, but the work ended in this way. Uh, so we disrupted the flow repeated tile pattern on their gate to become counted in piles. I, we wanted to, 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 to deconstruct that beauty of the repetition of the pattern to become piles. Okay. Also, these are part of the Muslim temple uh, in Dearborn. Uh, the work ended up after entering the Muslim temple in Southfield, North uh, De Dearborn. I became, I I'm expecting so many images of misrepresentation for Arabs, but specifically I found myself becoming interested in finding all of these nude playboy naked women inside the Muslim temple. I became more interested in these take, take pictures of these playboy images more than the Arabs misrepresentation. And just later I thought about it. It's like this same white, white men power of objectifying Arabs or ob objectifying women, uh, two sides for the same story. So collecting all of these uh, characters that I found there with this se sentence that I found in their room, Muslim is family, their secret society for their society. Keeping all of these kitschy kind of aesthetics and keeping having a billboard that is kitschy in their aesthetic, like them, they are kitschy. Uh, and I decided to have to out that society and to have this billboard in between Dearborn, Dearborn and Southfield, where is the Muslim temple, between the Muslim and the Muslim, uh, to have the billboard in the middle. And the billboard was rejected by three, four uh, advertising agencies in Detroit, even Arab agencies between them. Uh, but I had the billboard in my space, as we see it here, constructed actual size. Where also we see behind it, uh, a float, a parading float where we thought Amanda again and I of how to represent a float that can represent uh, the Arabs in, in that, uh, I, that place and appropriate their appropriation. So we were using the tarbush and materials of local materials also from the area of like tearing, praying carpets of local industry in Dearborn. I'm gonna jump not going to talk about the details happening here. Um, yeah. But here I was interested in also in the top picture here, we see a very old archival image for the Shriners of a black facing. Uh, but I was thinking of if, uh, if one black face is offensive, then why not the other Arab face or brown face? More precisely, why this masquerade wasn't as widely known or discussed. Let me jump quick uh, to this project that is uh, it's to, to highlight the issue of uh, also namesake. Um, namesake that I was fascinated by when I came here and found the story very quick is I'm, I'm visiting some relatives in Ohio and passing from Ohio to go to New York. Uh, on Greyhound buses and passing on the highway to pass between uh, Lebanon and South Lebanon. 
<laughs> there is two towns, American towns in Ohio, Lebanon, and just below that, South Lebanon, I'm on the highway between, to find that Google map is volunteering, voluntarily uh, recommending me to tell me there is a new Palestine below them. The same order of Lebanon, Janub Lebanon, Palestine. Three barriers, I can't go between them. The two barriers, I can't go between them. Between Palestine and the new Palestine, and even as a Palestinian experiencing in Lebanon, how it's hard to go uh, because they weird politics in Lebanon that I might be an Israeli, I can't go to Janoub Lebanon uh, as visiting Lebanon. All of these became like, wow, the same order, not just the namesake, but like finding myself between these barriers that I can't visit in Palestine became the starting point for the, for the investigation of a new Palestine. The new also was in interesting for me. It felt like sale, the solutions, like new Palestine. Like. So it felt like a sci-fi, but passing by this and illusion borders, I can't travel as Palestinian. The project ended up, I mean, the project included so many, many, many uh, questions that I had and, uh, and uh, through the time, but this billboard was constructed in then the town of New Palestine. The New Palestine town, to mention it's a white, fully 99% white town, if someone is curious about that question, and it's even it, it opened the new questions for me to know in, in my research that it has, as there is a new Palestine in Ohio, there is a new Palestine in Indiana. The one in Indiana that I put the billboard in uh, is, um, is also to go there and to know rumors that there was KKK living in that area. And, uh, uh, and they donate some of the land to, to the first German immigrants established the city. And all of these aspects made me to be careful of visiting there and friends telling me to not go by myself there. But the billboard ended up being there after visiting the Museum of New Palestine, where they have a small museum to, to archive and tell the story of, uh, of, of the area. And... Uh, uh, and there was one of these images, archival images, that shows all of the men sitting on the, in front of the station. There was a train passing by the city in like 100 years ago, more than that. And there is a small caption says, notice on the top picture, the name of the town was once Palestine, which is the top uh, sentence in the billboard. And that sentence was just amazing for me because I translate again in my brain to Arabic immediately. So it felt like, oh, I found the proof. The name of the town was once Palestine. And they mean in their context before they added the new, before it became a new Palestine. So I, I had that a translation for the sentence below in the billboard. Mulahaba ism al-balda ala sura a'la kana yawman Palestine. Obviously, I removed the picture. I took the caption without the image itself on the billboard. The sky became the picture in a way as having the billboard in their town. And below that, the, the signature of saying in the billboard constructed in Indiana saying, I heart in New Palestine in Ohio. Making a kind of uh, having like to show love from, to Ohio from Indiana and abstract the third Palestine I'm talking about. Sorry. While on the green part on the top, uh, it was a full feedback I got from someone from New Palestine uh, shared with me a full thread of the New Palestinians feedback to when they saw the billboard in the town on an application called Nextdoor. I don't know if anyone familiar with it. Um, these comments, and I just want to read some of the comments that they stated, the new Palestinians about the work, about the billboard, sorry. Uh, it was very like 55 uh, frames of repeating the image and, uh, and their comments. Someone says, for example, looks like Arabic or Hebrew, or Hebrew, Palestine. 
Someone else says, definitely a little odd in this small town. I always wondered why they would name a town in Indiana, New Palestine. Does it have a biblical connotation? But my favorite one, or the one before my favorite, with the Arabic writing and my humble opinion, I sense an anti-Semitic undertone, which, is, which I'm very uncomfortable with. Okay, this is my favorite. Personally, <laughs> I think any billboard standing on majority English-speaking land with a, with a foreign language on it should be questioned. We live in the United States, and even though we are inclusive of other nations, we need to preserve our English language. One last project, and uh, I'm ending here. Uh, this site-specific project, which is from 2016, called Memoir. Uh, the piece uh, included uh, this tiling or re-deconstructing the, the tiles on the floor to, to, to re-going back to revisit this industry and make up uh, this, uh, this tiling and go up with the pattern in this kind of bifurcation kind of strategy for the pattern. But the, the project, very briefly, is highlighting the, the, the story of Kuwaiti displacement uh, from the West Bank after 67. Ramallah was used to, to, to be uh, uh, like a Beirut summer place for Kuwaiti specifically people of owning houses in Ramallah. Uh, to go in the summer and to spend their time in, in specifically Ramallah, other than uh, Palestinian cities as a Christian village, open-minded for these Kuwaitis want to spend some good time in the summer. Uh, my interest in this project is became of how, what happened with these houses. In 67, they lost these houses in the Nexa and the uh, Israeli occupation took over these houses and they turned them as a military points to them. But what happens to these houses when the PA came and we own these houses, we are talking about houses in the West Bank, not in 48. So these houses right now is owned by Palestinians. I mean, at that moment when I was doing the research, I heard there is a new political uh, aspect by Mahmoud Abbas about these houses recently, but I became interested in the idea of who's the occupier right now and who's the occupied. And thinking of uh, deconstructing the, 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 the two-sided uh, story of, of Palestine, Israel, and bring this trilogy of, uh, of, uh, of Kuwait in specific and considering also the history of Palestine, Kuwait. But it became a fictional memoir of this uh, Kuwaiti writer that I made uh, based on true facts in his like Ghassan al-Rifai, uh, also referencing Ghassan Kanafani and the, the typical, the, the, the classical story of uh, the right of return made by Ghassan Kanafani. Um, and yesterday was the anniversary of his, uh, yeah, a few days ago, uh, his uh, assassination. But the, the work ended up of this, uh, of this memoir uh, called At-Tayyab was Sharis wal Qabih, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, of the Kuwaiti uh, remembering when he saw the, the, the cowboy American movie, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly in 66, remembering the last summer before his exile and uh, having his key, he's still holding his key until now, the Kuwaiti, and uh, giving me the copyright to, to announce and to share his work and having the, the story of the right of return and his love story, remembering his Palestinian lover, Bosal, and all of these memories from, from that time, uh, having that copyright and his Kuwaiti accent uh, to retell uh, the Palestinian story from a Kuwaiti accent. So it was like you enter the installation for Palestinian audience to rehear the story of the right of return and still holding the keys and being not allowed to enter in that, sum, in that time of 67, uh, but from a Kuwaiti ac accent. So I wanna say lastly here, we see here a sense of queer thought 
based in notions of bifurcation, deviation, deviant identity politics, a politics of subversion, perhaps more ideological, material, and historic in nature. The falsify, the deviation of the line, splitting the path of a line from the intended geometric pattern in traditional Palestinian folkloric tiling as its own heritage. That's a wonderful, thanks Noor, that's a wonderful observation. And it's actually, it's the starting point when I opened this, when I became obsessed more, when I heard from Palestinian people, oh, can you imagine we took the, the, the houses of the Kuwaitis and, and the first response from Palestinians in Palestine, they are Kuwaitis, like they don't care about this, this house, like don't worry about them, let's, like we are the hopeless ones, we need to get our houses, like now you want to solve their like, solution, there is, we have much more like priorities for that, but that was a more challenge for me and made me more obsessed, more interested in the subject, because our, our struggle, our, our case is not about People left, lost their houses in Haifa, not most of the case that are poor people. We're not talking about, uh, it's not a case of, of where to live right now, but it's, it's a case of right of return. And it's, it's beyond for me than uh, uh, who's poor or who's rich. And uh, in addition to that, I mean, it's, it's a great observation, but I, I, for me, it, it's like, I wanted to have that kind of, it's specifically Kuwaiti. Kuwaiti that, uh, that it's a long history and uh, I mean, for Palestinians who live there, Kuwait is, so for so many Palestinians, there is, I was telling Lara, we were talking about it, but like Kuwait for so many Palestinians uh, that they remember like elder generation is the heaven place, the place that they lived the most beautiful experiences in it uh, as being in diaspora. Uh, while other generation, it's the most horrible experience of what happened at some point to them uh, during the Gulf War. So those experiences for me is just to, to bring all of that in the work and to have this specific identity with it, if we want to assume, I mean, not all Kuwaitis are rich. I mean, I would assume in 67, someone having another house in, in, for the summer, they are rich to some point, but I was interested in not having the identity of the role of in this trilogy to add to the Palestine, Israel, like Jordan or Egypt or Iran or United States, but Kuwaiti. Like just, it's, it's an interest that I have of bringing, of bringing that anyone is related to the struggle of Palestine, all identities, which is a part of my interest, not, um, it's a notion that I don't want to show what is uh, Palestine as the other, but you are a part of it. The least identity you would think about <laughs> to be the occupied as a Kuwaiti is, is became my interest than bringing uh, talk about Yemenis, for example, in Palestine or something that make more sense to think about, uh, but Kuwaitis and also this, I mean, that's not answering exactly the bourgeois interest that you have in the, in, the, in the question. But for me, it is related to the stereotypical aspects of when you think of Arab Gulf and specifically in 60s, the identity of Kuwaitis and richness from that time. I think it's really interesting, and at least I saw in this work, um, but beyond knowing what the backstory is, I think just initially from looking at this piece, the tile work, which looks like it's a, a mix and an amalgamation of several different visual um, symbols, right, tile works. Um, and it goes back to some of one of the first themes that you were talking about, sort of what's an original and what's a copy? And what does it mean to be a copy? Because most originals actually probably were copies anyway. And the idea of, you know, is a copy actually just a new original? And I, I, these are just some questions that, or some 
ideas that popped in while looking to this. And I don't know if that played a role in the creation of this piece, because again, you're creating a work, creating this installation based on the research that you've been doing on this very peculiar topic and story regarding the Kuwaitis in Palestine. So I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there. And, and yeah. Yeah, let me just let me, elaborate yeah. about the making of the tile works. Yeah. That's that's a great question, and uh, just for the lack of the time, I just let me explain Sorry. very quick, uh, very quick uh, that this the it's very based on and real uh, facts of this long research I was doing. I visited these houses. I went to to so many of them. I had conversations of Palestinians living in them, and asking them. Oh, I heard there was someone else living here in the 60s and trying to, because they, <laughs> I mean, it made me really feel that I'm, I'm doing a bad thing of investigating and, and uh, of what I'm doing exactly in this. So, but what I want to say, the, the, the revisiting this industry and going actually, the house has stopped, like you don't see new architecture of still in Palestine, creating this very complicated tiling uh, industry in Palestine. It's a, it's a factory that is it's, it's, it's actually more expensive right now, but it still lived. Like there is a factory in Nablus, I would, I would like to name them Aslan factory where I went there and working with this, with this really amazing old man helping me to find the color to, to fake the ones and it was very complicated because the, the house in Ramallah in another city and to bring that from Nablus to Ramallah. But going through all of this and find that was for me to, the idea of the tiles as, as our images, our uh, symbols, our uh, Palestinian narrative that, that to so many Palestinian generation, let me talk about myself being sick of it being sick of the traditional uh, uh, narrative and wanted to have the heritage to go up, you know, like to, to go from the ground and to go up and to, 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 to have this kind of, I called it the pattern that is linear to become not linear and to create this kind of bifurcation that is happening like in rivers or so all of that was exactly in the heart of, of the story of, uh, of bringing this identity and faking the, the original story. But it's true. So it's not fully fiction. It's based on, on, but still not true, you know? Like all of that for me is, 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 is exactly, that's very short to answer the question. And uh, um, yeah, the, st the, the novel is actually on the bookstore uh, in the Sculpture Center. Uh, on sale <laughs> by Ghassan al-Rifai, not by me, <laughs> on the publisher. 